Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. A Quincy police sergeant is being hailed with a national award for his part in rescuing the victim of a house fire last year. Wenatchee High School students who participate in extracurricular activities will now have access to free snacks thanks to a local nonprofit. Cooler temperatures with rain likely tomorrow before we see a warming trend this weekend. Your Easter weather forecast is coming up. The Chelan Douglas Health District has now identified 58 cases of pertussis or whooping cough as of March 22nd. The number of cases have tripled since March 11th when the last report of confirmed cases was 17. The health district first confirmed four cases of whooping cough in February that were linked to an unspecified local school. Whooping cough begins with cold-like symptoms, develops into a bad cough, and is spread through large respiratory respiratory water droplets. As spring break approaches, CDHD recommends precautions like avoiding visiting vulnerable individuals if you do have respiratory illness symptoms, staying home for 24 hours if you're sick, especially with a fever, and seeking health care evaluation if your symptoms don't improve. A Quincy police sergeant is being hailed with a national award for his part in rescuing the victim of a house fire last year. In January 2023, Sergeant Stephen Harder helped to save a disabled 67-year-old woman who collapsed and was unable to flee while her home in the 300 block of L Street Southwest was burning. Harder and a fellow police officer, Jaslyn Silva, crawled through the smoke to find the woman and pull her free and then performed life-saving CPR. This week, the Carnegie Hero Fund announced Harder was among the recipients of the Carnegie Medal given to people throughout North America who risked their lives to save others. Harder's award specifies that he went beyond his call of duty to perform the rescue. He's also entitled to a financial grant for his efforts. The Eastmont School Board heard an update on the plan to implement a dual language program at one of its elementary schools. At last night's meeting, Myra Navarro Gomez, Eastmont's Assistant Director of Special Programs, explained that dual language programs help some students maintain a language while others learn a new one. Gomez outlined the next steps and planning process and said the district has not yet identified the school for the program. The implementation of dual language is in accordance with the Washington State Superintendent Chris Reichdahl's vision of having a dual language school in every district by 2040. Gomez said that there's a lot of planning to be done, but her team would work with the board to target the 2025-2026 school year to begin the program. Eastmont High School is searching for a new principal. The candidate will replace Lance Noel, who's been the Eastmont High School principal since the 2013-14 school year. Noel began his career at the high school in 1996 and became the assistant principal in 2007. The principal position opened on March 1st, and the district says applicant screening will begin in early April. Though the timeline could vary, the district is planning to interview finalists on April 20 second and have their candidates selection the week of May 6th. When we come back, the sister city relationship between the Wenatchee Valley and Misawa, Japan is an enduring one, but it doesn't work without host families. Wenatchee High School students who participate in extracurricular activities will now have access to free snacks thanks to a local nonprofit. And Congressman Dan Newhouse had a chance last week to grill Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack about the reintroduction of grizzly bears in the North Cascades. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. 
Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. The sister city relationship between the Wenatchee Valley and Misawa, Japan is an enduring one, but it doesn't work without host families. The Misawa Sister City Association is seeking host families for Japanese students. They'll be visiting the Wenatchee Valley from May 1st through May 5th. Uh, Misawa, the 2024 Misawa delegation consists of 20 Japanese students ages 13 to 18. Local host families will be asked to provide a bedroom for one or two Japanese students for five nights, five breakfasts, and three dinners for the visiting students. Transportation to and from group meeting places each morning or afternoon, and a full day of engagement between hosts and students on Saturday, May 4th. East Wenatchee Mayor Geraldine Crawford is coordinating the host family outreach. You can contact her at the email and phone number you see on your screen. Wenatchee High School students who participate in extracurricular activities will now have access to free snacks thanks to a local nonprofit. Small Miracles, an organization dedicated to ending hunger among Wenatchee Valley children, will work with Wenatchee High School special education classes to facilitate the new program that will benefit 300 students. Ten containers with snacks have already been filled and distributed among spring sports teams and after school clubs. The snack bins will continue to be provided as needed throughout the school year. Small Miracles has been a longtime partner of Wenatchee School District by providing meals to students during summer break. Congressman Dan Newhouse has been a foe of grizzly bear reintroduction plans throughout his time in the House of Representatives. With a new environmental impact statement advocating up to 25 bears re-entering the North Cascades over a 10-year period, Newhouse questioned Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack last week on his agency's part in protecting farms if grizzlies are ushered back into the landscape. Are you aware if the Park Service or Fish and Wildlife consulted with the USDA as they finalized their EIS. And also, as this probably goes through your agency, um, do, do you know if either of these agencies, uh, as a result of their disregard, my opinion again, for public safety and the residents would have to live with these actions, have to have a plan with dealing with crop loss, with livestock depredation, um, that's inevitable in my opinion. So have they uh, worked with USDA on any plans for that? We have a good close personal, a good, uh, good close re relationship with the Department of Interior and all of its, um, all of its agencies. Um, I think we're in constant contact on a variety of issues. I can check specifically on this issue. I'd be surprised if we hadn't. Um, the way this works, uh, we provide input, we provide, um, a review of how it might impact and affect agriculture. Um, I don't uh, tell Secretary Holland how to run her department. I don't want her telling me how to run my department. I get that. Uh, but we can certainly provide advice and counsel and direction and guidance. Um, it's up to the department then whether they take that advice or guidance. If they don't, then it's up to us at USDA to figure out how to mitigate the consequences. So as you were asking the questioner talking about this, it occurred to me this is not unlike deer issues that we've confronted in other parts of the the country where EQIP and other NRCS programs are available to create uh, protection uh, of livestock and crops if, if that becomes an issue. Coming up next, the First United Methodist Church of Wenatchee was recently the target of an email scam. We'll tell you how the congregation handled the situation coming up in tonight's feature story. Along with cooler temperatures, rain is likely tomorrow before we see a big warm up by Easter weekend. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. 
Mount Stewart Physical Therapy is all new. New staff, new therapists, and a fabulous new chiropractor. That's right. You do not need to drive to Wenatchee or Cashmere for your care. Come see Dr. Zolman, D.C. No referral needed for most insurances. Open your auto and work injury claims with us or fax your post-op and Medicare therapy prescriptions to us right here in town. We offer covered pelvic floor services. We are premium health care for the Upper Valley. Improve your quality of life today. Mount Stewart Integrative Therapy and Chiropractic. Caught in a conflict? Family? Workplace? Neighbor? Business? Housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. In tonight's features story, the First United Methodist Church of Wenatchee was recently the target of an email scam asking church members to purchase gift cards for sick cancer patients. Thankfully, only two members took the bait and uncovered the scam before their gift card balances could be fully used. NCW Life News caught up with Reverend Debbie Sperry to hear about the unfortunate event and how her congregation handled it. We had someone create a false email for a church member. We didn't know that at the time, but we received an email from a church member with first and last name at a known domain. And uh, they said, I have a new email address. Please update our database. And could you please send me another copy of our directory? So we did that and one of us was suspicious about that request and so we reached out directly via text for a number that we had on file and said, do you have a new email? And that individual said, no, I do not. So we knew that it was suspicious, we knew it was problematic. And within several hours we had multiple people from the church reaching out to us saying, hey, what about this favor? What can we do for you? Uh, and forwarding us emails that said, uh, it was me sending an email, again, from a falsified email address saying, I need a favor, I need you to be discreet, you're the best person for this job. If an individual responded to that email, they were asked to go buy gift cards. And if there was sort of further dialogue, it was gift cards to help people who are battling cancer, to encourage them along the way. And the financial request was for four $500 gift cards. And then the completion of the task, so to speak, was that the individual would take photos of the gift cards, including the PIN numbers, which basically gives them an electronic verification to activate those cards and use them electronically wherever they could. Um, and so that was sort of the final component of what was asked. Fortunately, only two people really took the bait, so to speak. One who did follow through and sent $2,000 worth of gift card information to this scammer, assuming, believing that it was me. Um, the good news for them is they were alerted along the way and were then able to contact their bank, their credit card company, their financial advisor, and the gift card company. And at the end of the day, only $160 had been used, the gift cards were then canceled, and they're working with the fraud departments to reimburse that remaining amount. The other person purchased $1,000 worth of gift cards and said, I wanna give these to you in person. And I said, well, good news, I don't want them. <laughs> I don't need them. And we were able to talk about what solutions might be available. They can't be returned to the store. Um, and they were able to make a necessary purchase in their life with that $1,000. As a pastor, it's really maddening to see somebody ask in my name, uh, using my name in vain, because it's predicated on the trust that I've built with my congregation. And so people believe in me and they believe in the work that we do together and they trust me to represent them in the world and to show up at hospitals and to show up at care facilities and to be with people in a time of crisis. I'm 
in many ways standing in for them in places and spaces that they cannot. And so when somebody else takes advantage of the trust and the relationship that we have built, it's really maddening. It's really um, humbling because I'm super powerless in it. I mean, I can say over and over again, this isn't me, this isn't how I do business. I would never ask you to do these things. So uh, if I ever you know, knew the individual, I'd probably kick them in the shins, but. Um, <laughs> Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great Tuesday, a mix of clouds and sun for most the most part throughout the day here in the Wenatchee Valley. But as we move into the upper valley, what a gorgeous shot. This is our cashmere sky fi tower camera and beautiful shot outside our weather window from this afternoon. And as Malcolm, our producer pointed out, look how green the hills getting already. Here we are sort of into late March. I guess we are into late March, only five Five days left, but things are really greening up out there. But you can see those clouds beginning to move into the Cascades, and that's going to usher in a storm system that we will see rain showers for us all day tomorrow. But light mountain snow, a definite possibility if you are traveling mountain passes, Stevens or Snoqualmie passes. Just keep in mind that mainly in the mornings and the evening hours will be the trickiest with some slick roadways, and then things should melt off during the day. Not bad today about where we should be in the Wenatchee Valley. 57, our unofficial high temperature. 56 is normal for this time of year and our record high, a beautiful 74 degrees and that was set in 1994. 39 this morning, 36 is normal and our record low temperature, 24 degrees set in 1985. Sunrise 10 minutes to 7 this morning and the sun will set tonight at 723. All right, temperatures as we get you into Wednesday. Boy, we we are really going to cool off. We're going to see a cold front and a large Pacific storm both move through our area. 53 Moses Lake and Afreda, 52 for you folks in Quincy. And then look at all of the 40s, Ellensburg, Wenatchee, Eniad up into Chelan and all parts west. Leavenworth 47 tomorrow, Lake Wenatchee high temperature only at 45 degrees. All right, tonight we do expect increasing clouds and that's all ahead of this area of low pressure that is bringing clouds our way. Here's the cold front associated with that. So that will cool us down overnight. We'll see seasonal lows generally in those mid 30s overnight tonight. For Wednesday, that storm, boy, it'll be statewide. Widespread rain showers, 100% chance of rain for us here tomorrow. Gonna really cool down too with high temperatures only near 50 as we just talked about. Then for Thursday, this storm system will still be off the Washington coast but it's going to kind of ring itself out throughout the day. About a 30% chance of rain if those showers get across the Cascades on Thursday. High temperatures into those low 50s. For your Friday, this is where things begin to really get better. Partly cloudy skies. Our area of low pressure slowly sags to the south. We're talking temperatures about normal into the mid and upper 50s for Friday. Saturday kicking off our Easter weekend. There's our friend. High pressure as it begins to move into the uh, west coast of the U.S. We'll begin a warming trend on Saturday. High temperatures, how about that? Near 60 degrees. And I'll tell you, our Easter Sunday, probably one of the nicest we've had in a long, long time. Crystal clear skies statewide on Sunday. It will be warmer and just nice. High temperatures into the mid 60s for Easter afternoon. And then on Monday, sunny skies. And we're going to warm up some more as our ridge continues to build over the northwest. We're talking highs on Monday into the upper 60s. So a nice stretch of weather beginning this weekend. 36 overnight tonight and then a day and a half or so of some rainy weather. Boy, it's going to be a rainy one tomorrow and 49 degrees. 53 Thursday, 57 with partly cloudy skies Friday. And then as we get you into your Easter weekend, Saturday sunny and 60, 65 on Sunday for your Easter and then for Monday, sunny skies and warmer with a high temperature then of 68 degrees. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents the magic of Manson. Welcome to Navarre Cooley Tasting Room in downtown Manson. You're invited to stop by, relax, and enjoy a sample of our longer aged wines. 
you will taste the difference from the very first sip. Tipsy Canyon is proud to introduce their latest lineup of new wines. The Garvins will make you feel right at home as spring unfolds across the Chelan Valley. Come up to the Manson Hills and experience the magic for yourself. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. And a happy Tuesday. The Gonzaga women's basketball team is in the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015 after a 77-66 win over Utah last night in Spokane. Yvonne Ejim scored 17 points and had 13 rebounds to win their 32nd game of the season. Third quarter underway. That's not how you want to start. Egypt pick. And the deuce. Place is going nuts. 35 straight here at the kennel. Oh, Step don't back. go under. Step don't go back. under. Oh, Mike, you're reading my mind, buddy. And Egypt sprints the floor. Now you got the Trong sisters involved. Biggest lead of the game right now for Gonzaga. You're looking at it. Inside. Blocked by Peely. Four on the shot clock. You got to put it up if you're Kaylin. Oh! He's got 18. 12 of those coming in the first quarter. Let's see if Kaylee Tron can answer. She sure can. 24 now for the great Alyssa Peely over her seasonal average. High low. Egypt misses. And goes right back up. That's it. Gonzaga coach Lisa Fortier says the second quarter was the biggest factor in the Bulldogs reaching the next round. These guys, uh, they set their own goals and they want to break all these records and do all these things that people at Gonzaga haven't done before. And you just have to re keep reminding them to check them off little by little. And so, um, you know, if you want to do things we haven't done, we got to go one step at a time. And they played tough today. Um, the quarter, the second quarter, you know, Utah's a great third quarter team and, um, you know, they're a really good team anyway, but we, we, we wanted to be strong in the third quarter, but our second quarter, it turns out, was a huge decider in the game. And just, I love how tough our team played when it got rough out there, it got close. I don't know if they cut it to six or five, seven, something like that. Um, six. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just know that uh, we came down and made some free throws, and we, we got the stop that we needed. We got the rebounds. Um, all of a sudden, here comes Eliza and Vani on the glass. And so I just love how we covered for each other in every area today, and um, really proud of our effort. The uh, Zags will remain close to home Friday. They'll be at Moda Center in Portland to face top-seeded Texas at 7 o'clock. That'll be on ESPN. Haley Van Litz, USL Tigers, make that LSU Tigers, are also in the Sweet 16 and will face UCLA on Saturday morning. That'll be at 10 o'clock in Albany, New York on ABC. Well, the Mariners picked up yet another win in Cactus League Baseball Monday with a 4-1 victory over San Diego. Bryce Miller and six relievers combined on a three hitter to earn the win. Ty France went three for three with a run and RBI while Jorge Polanco was one for four with two runs driven in to get the offense going. Here's the pitch. Swung on crushed right field. This is hammered. It's on its way and it's off the wall. Ty France will score JP right behind him. The throw is cut off. Julio scamper, scampers to third. Jorge Polanco, a ringing two-run double, plants it off the wall. The Mariners, the first two runs tonight. It's 2-0 Mariners. Here's the pitch. Swung on, line drive, right field, base hit. It just scoots past Bogarts and Cronenworth. Coming to score is Canzone, and the Mariners tack on another. It's 3-1 M's. Next pitch. Swing in a line drive down the right field line. It's going to be a fair ball in toward the corner. Heading for third is Zavala. He's going to be waved in. Up with the ball, the right fielder. The throw in is cut off. The relay to the plate, the slide. And Zavala is safe at home. Ben Williamson with a triple into the right field corner. The Mariners pick up an insurance run. It's now the Mariners four. 
And the Padres won. Ben Williamson with an extra base hit and a run batted in. Seattle will face their facility mates one more time today before packing up and heading for Seattle for opening day Thursday night against Boston. Well, the Seattle Kraken hopes some fresh faces will help stop an eight-game losing streak tonight at Climate Pledge Arena. Seattle hosts the Anaheim Ducks at 7 o'clock and have uh, called up Ryan Winterton and Logan Morrison from AHL Coachella to make the, their NHL debuts. It's pretty surreal. Obviously, you, you never expect to, to get the first call. You never know when going to happen and um, yeah it was a pretty special day yesterday and I'm, I'm really happy to be here don't have too many expectations I'm just I'm really looking forward to it obviously it's something I'm going to remember my whole life and um, yeah it's uh, it's going to be great I expect them to play tomorrow I will make the final decision in the morning but uh, you know they both uh, yeah both both guys have earned their way here uh, with their you know with the way that they've they've played uh, down in Coachella uh, and the way they've built their year so yeah I would expect to see them uh, in the in the lineup very soon the decision to have them here today has you know that was made before last night's result um, you know, so no, they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're here because they've earned their way. Tonight's game will be broadcast on Root Sports Northwest. The prep baseball schedule got off to an early start earlier today. Manson was playing host to Tadaskett. Waterville Mansfield traveling to Bridgeport. Okanagan hosting Brewster and Lake Roosevelt playing at Liberty Bell. For the larger schools, Cashmere on the road at Kiona Benton for two games. Rest are single games with West Valley at Wenatchee. Eastmont's hosting and Freda Eisenhower plays in Moses Lake. Omak hosts Quincy. Chelan visits Cascade. Of course, NCW Life Channel was out earlier today at Recreation Park for the Panthers and Rams in their Big Nine baseball ball tilt. I had the play by play. It was live streamed on our Facebook page and then will be rebroadcast coming up at seven o'clock tonight here on the NCW Life channel. Fast pitch softball schedule, a busy one with Cashmere at Kyona Benton for a doubleheader. Manson hosting Tadaskett, Chelan at Cascade, Quincy hosting Omak, Waterville Mansfield uh, visiting Bridgeport, Brewster taking on Okanagan, Lake Roosevelt playing at Liberty Bell. Prep boys soccer schedule has Cascade at Chelan, Bridgeport hosting Okanagan, Pateras plays at Brewster. Liberty Bell takes on Oroville. East Valley's at Efreda. Omak hosts Quincy at 6. The 7 o'clock games have Wenatchee at West Valley. Moses Lake hosting Sunnyside. And Eastmont's on the road at Eisenhower. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. Have a happy Tuesday. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.
I'm Anna Maria Espana, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel.